BT decided to have a black men's summit and had DL Ugly host it. So a black men's summit. Apparently, only super duper Democrats and super liberals were invited, which is very strange to me. And this is why this is this is the reason why Democrats feel that they don't have to do anything for us in order to win our vote. Because they never, they only show the DL Uglies, the people that don't care what Kamala Harris does, don't care what Joe Biden does. They're just going to vote Democrat. They're just going to vote Democrat. But when you don't have a Byron Donalds, when you don't have maybe like a Jason Whitlock, where you don't have um, plenty of other people that are Republican or that are more conservative, when you don't give them a voice, what it does is it shows the Democrats that, hey, these all the black men, they are already on board with us. Why not have a conversation where you have some conservative voices as well, or just people that just don't agree with everything that y'all are saying? So we're going to get into this. Um, I'll let, I'll, maybe we'll look at the first couple minutes here, but then I have timestamps throughout of certain things that I'd like to get y'all feedback on um, and then have a conversation with y'all about. So let's take a look. Men. Every time a presidential election rolls around, they're telling you that this is the most consequential election in generations. This time for us, it may actually be true. When was the last time America asked black men what we wanted? And I know what it's like to not be asked what you want. I'm married to a black woman. Look at Scrappy in the back. And VT, notice how you didn't answer my question. I asked what, what makes her qualified, you know, to you. But all right, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, but... <laughs> You got JD putting his hand over his heart. Like what? <laughs> oh my God. But I promise you, it's not a trick question. Tonight, we're going to explore the issues that matter to us. Now, whether you support Kamala, ride with Trump, or plan to stay home, let's have a real conversation among- Whether you support Kamala, Trump, or plan to stay home, let's have a real conversation. Why would you say that, but then not have anybody there that falls in the category of anything outside of we better vote Kamala? It's, it's just not genuine. It's just not genuine. Us, black men, about what's really at stake in this election. This is the BET Black Men Summit. Let's get to it. Oh, my God. Yo, ladies, black lady, to, to, my, to my black ladies, I apologize. I really do apologize. I really do apologize. I apologize because this is, this is a joke. This is a joke. They're staging putting the black power sign up. Like, this is so corny. It's it, like, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? And look at VT asking me questions. You want to answer questions with questions. That's what Kevin Samuels used to say that they do. In Summit, let's get to it. Black men, as you know, are a closely watched voting bloc. I'm speaking to men directly. Be on a major party ticket as a DEI hire. I didn't know she was black. But polling shows that some black men are considering voting for Donald Trump. All right, let me black sit men up. are let like any up. other voting group. All right, skip the intro. Skip the intro. Let's get to the meat of this. All right, so this video that I'm, this clip that I'm getting ready to show y'all. So this brother is, I believe his name is Dr. Wes Bellamy. I believe he's the he was the vice mayor of Charlottesville. Maybe he still is, but I know he was the vice mayor when the situation in Charlottesville happened. You know, the fine people on both sides, good people on both sides, whatever. The, I, I, let's just get into it. The council at the time, uh, the youngest person elected. And after a group of white supremacists literally came into our community and unalive someone, rest in peace, to have the hire, the first press conference that 45 had, he stated that again, literally there are good people on both sides. Furthermore, this is the same individual if we're talking about who sh This is so embarrassing. This is terrible journalism. I mean, if you consider D.L. Ugly a journalist, the fact that every, nobody checked him on what he just said, this was debunked. 
I want to play it to y'all again. There's a lot of people. And the reason why this bothers me is because I was one of those people for seven years, at least six years. I thought I, Trump's racist. He called neo-Nazis and white supremacists. He said that they he included them in that fine people on both sides. For the longest, that's what I thought. And we've covered this before on our show. We've covered this before where that's not they didn't they, they cut it off before he clearly stated in a couple sentences later um, where he said very clearly, I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and white supremacists. So what we're going to do is we're going to listen to what he just said again, and then we're going to pull up the receipts from Trump speaking on the Charlottesville situation. Should be uh, who, who should we both 45 had. He stated that, again, literally, there are good people on both sides. Furthermore, good people on both sides. That's what he stated. So hold on. Give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second, because I wasn't really sure if I was going to pull this up. We're pulling both up. So I got I had two videos saved, two videos saved. Hopefully I get the right one. Let me actually go to the notes. This is this is terrible because the media, they push this lie. It was terrible journalism. If it, I, if if Trump could, I almost think like, yo, could you sue for something like this? Like for misrepresenting my words, misrepresenting me as having me appear as somebody that gave was complimentary to to white supremacists. So let's hold on, hold on. I'm gonna make sure that we get. We're gonna look at. So I want us to look at two different videos, two different videos. Um, the first one is the Washington Post. Hold on, hold on. We're gonna we're gonna get into this. I want y'all to look at, let's go to one minute and 30 seconds. I want y'all to hear this. Because for a lot of people, even when I say, even though we covered it on the show before, I'm, I've spoken to a few people and they're like, well, well you showed it? Like, I, I didn't see it? or So you're going to see it right now. You're going to see it right now. So what's, what's so funny about the situation is there's actually two different times where he called it out. So I didn't know this. Apparently, this is the one from, I believe, August 14th. Let me get the exact date. Let me make this smaller. All right. So this is August 14th. The video that everybody talks about is actually this video right here that you guys see. I don't know if you can see me pointing to it on the screen, but this video right here is actually that's the one where he said good people or fine people on both sides. That's actually from the day after. So I want to play both for you guys to get a listen. And you tell me if his words were misrepresented or if you believe or, or if you heard it exactly how he's saying it here, you all tell me. Jeff Sessions, the Department of Justice has opened a civil rights investigation into the deadly car attack that killed one innocent American and wounded 20 others. To anyone who acted criminally in this weekend's racist violence, you will be held fully accountable. Justice will be delivered. As I said on Saturday, we condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence. It has no place in America. And as I have said many times before, no matter the color of our skin, we all live under the same laws. We all salute the same great flag, and we are all made by the same almighty God. We must love each other, show affection for each other, and unite together in condemnation of hatred, bigotry, and violence. We must rediscover the bonds of love and loyalty that bring us together as Americans. Racism is evil. And those who cause violence in its name are criminals and thugs, including the KKK. Neo who peeped the criminals and thugs? Who remembers that Barack Obama speech when he was talking about, um, I think it was protesters, I believe it was Baltimore. Was it Freddie Gray? When he called the, the, the people protesting criminals and thugs. Right? Trump's calling the racist folk criminals and thugs. Did anybody see this? I didn't see this at the time. In its name are criminals and thugs, including the KKK, neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and other hate groups that are repugnant to everything we hold dear as Americans. 
We are a nation founded on the truth that all of us are created equal. We are equal in the eyes of our Creator. We are equal under the law. And we are equal under our Constitution. Those who spread violence in the name of bigotry strike at the very core of America. Two days ago, a young American woman, Heather Hare, was tragically killed. Her death fills us with grief, and we send her family our thoughts, our prayers, and our love. We also mourn the two Virginia State Troopers who died in service to their community, their commonwealth, and their country. Troopers Jay Cullen and Burke Bates exemplify the very best of America, and our hearts go out to their families, their friends, and every member of American law enforcement. All right, so I want to leave that there. Uncompetitive, you got you to listen, bro. I said that there's two different clips. So I said that this was the one from August 14th. The one from August 15th is the one where he says very fine people on both sides. But I wanted to play this first because it occurred a day before, before those comments even came out. So he had already condemned white supremacists, Nazis, bigotry. He had already condemned them a day before, and they still put out the quote saying that he said that there's fine people on both sides as if he's talking about the white supremacists when he said it the day before. And uh, according to this, and we're going to get into the next clip that you're talking about. So let's get into that clip. Hold on. Hold on one second. Let me take this off real quick. All right, all right, all right. All right, so this is the one. Timestamp is because it's 17 minutes long. We're definitely not listening to all that. So let's go to 12 minutes. 12 minutes. So this is the one where it's more like a press conference. He's going back and forth, answering questions, arguing with the press. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's uh so like I said, this one right here. This is from what does it say? What's the date? What's the date? August 15th, responding to questions. So this is the video that everybody has seen, but only a clip of it. You had some very bad people in that group, but you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. You had people in that group. Excuse me. Excuse me. I saw the same pictures as you did. You had people in that group that were there to protest the taking down of, to them, a very, very important statue and the renaming of a park from Robert E. Lee to another name. Washington well, no, George Washington was a slave owner. Was George Washington a slave owner? So will George Washington now lose his status? Are we going to take down, excuse me, are we going to take down, are we going to take down statues to George Washington? How about Thomas Jefferson? What do you think of Thomas Jefferson? You like him? Okay, good. Are we going to take down the statue? Because he was a major slave owner. Now, are we going to take down his statue? So, you know what? It's fine. You're changing history. You're changing culture. And you had people, and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists, because they should be condemned totally. But you had many people... We all should be mad at the media. We all should be mad at the media. We were told a lie. And this vice mayor, keep, think about it. Let's go back to why we're playing this video. Because they're having a black men's summit. The vice mayor of Charlottesville, he has to know, unless he's just totally ignorant and naive, he has to know Trump's full statement as the vice mayor of Charlottesville. And eight years later, or seven years later, he's still saying the same thing, trying to manipulate us into thinking that Trump, if Trump is if so bad, this is what I don't understand. If Trump is Hitler, if Trump is a Nazi, if Trump's a fascist, if he's that bad, why do you have to play games with the things that he's saying? Why do you have to try to mislead us? Why do you have to try to, I, I wouldn't call it misquoting, but misrepresenting his message? Why do you have to do that? I don't understand. The majority of us have never seen that th the end of that clip. It's embarrassing that they are still continuing to push this message. It's embarrassing. There's right. Look, you can like whoever you want. You could dislike whoever you want. But there has to be some respect for the truth. 
So just because I I don't like somebody, this is like high school stuff. Just oh, I don't like you, so I I spread I spread some um some bad info about you, some gossip. We can't do stuff like that. And and it's like we're relying on people. Th- thank God that we have other news sources now with YouTube and other platforms, TikTok, wherever people are getting their news. But we rely on the news to give us this type of information. And this is around the time that I don't know if y'all noticed. This is around the time where I really think that a lot of the news stations started to shift. They probably always are some, you know, well, Fox is probably the only conservative leaning one. But a lot of the others probably still leaned, you know, liberal. But this was the beginning of, nah, we're not leaning liberal. We are liberal. So we're giving you news from a biased liberal standpoint. This is ridiculous. It's it's terrible journalism. Terrible journalism. Um, I think we can. Uh, I think we got enough of that. Um, I don't think well, he's in that group anything. other than neo Nazis and white nationalists. Okay. So it's. I don't know. I don't know. Let's get back to the other video. Let's get back to the other video. Let's keep hearing. Let's keep listening to what Brother Bellamy says. And I want to. I'm going to go back, and I want y'all to hear what he said. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The first press conference that 45 had. He stated that, again, literally, there are good people on both sides. Furthermore, <laughs> got brothers jumping on BT on a, on a huge platform. And everybody in this audience probably just accepts what that brother just said because they got the mic on stage. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to do. All right, we're going to move on to gun violence. Ew, ew, it's Dak. Just want to thank you for checking out our video and visiting the OG Network. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure that you give us a like. And if you're looking to join a community of inspired individuals striving for purposeful abundance, subscribe. And if you're feeling real generous, share the video with some friends and family. All right, I'll see y'all soon. Ew.